So here I have the app, and if I turn the slider there, oops, it'll turn on the light, turn it off, it'll turn. Hi guys, I just wanted to make a quick video that's kind of like a PSA about people using smart homes and IoT devices or Internet of Things devices. Uh, now, a lot of people have been putting these things in their homes and you know you want to have like an, an automatic light or something timed or something to that effect. And there's a bunch of brands that sell this stuff. There's like Philips Hue, there's Google stuff, there's Amazon stuff, there's so many brands. Uh, but all of these brands share one important thing in common, which is that they are all proprietary equipment that runs through central servers. And there's a variety of problems with this uh, in terms of inviting that into your home. But one really important thing that I don't think a lot of people realize is that the servers that are run by these services that store your information on them and store your profile and all your settings and stuff like that, uh, they are being obviously paid for by these companies out of sales from the stuff they're selling you. Now the issue though is that at some point these brands are going to be discontinued or something to that effect, eventually obviously, right? And then all the money that you invested into your Philips Hue system or your Amazon system is going to be lost because it has to go through the server and it's kind of useless without that server, which will eventually get shut down. Uh, so, you know, some people are, might be willing to put up with that, but there's also really the privacy issue that clearly this, this data about your house is being exfiltrated to some server and then back. Like when on your app, when you turn it on or off, it is not just going straight to your light bulb. It's going around the world to a server in New Jersey or something to uh, be turned on or off. So it's a lot of, it's a lot of bloat, but it's also a privacy issue that, uh, this information is, there's probably someone who wants to know uh, when your lights are on or off and aggregate that into large data models. But uh, I really just want to let you guys know as a PSA that you don't have to go with one of these systems. There are open source systems available. So the two biggest ones are something called Home Assistant and another one is Open Hab. But the thing that they both share in common is that you have to host your own server. Uh, basically, it does the same thing that these disconnected servers would do. And then it holds like the information about your about your home and what bulbs and stuff you have on your own server computer, so you control that information. Now a lot of people might stop there and be like, "Whoa, I don't uh, making a server sounds really complicated and really techy. Uh, this sounds like something that's a lot of work." And you know, if you're an absolute beginner, it can be a little bit of work, but it's really important to make your own server, and it's a lot less difficult than you might than it might sound on the on the face of it. Basically, more or less, what making your own server is, is taking an old laptop and running services off of it that you, the host, can access. So that's pretty much all it is. Normally, you connect it to your router as well. Uh, I might make a more thorough video tutorial on what exactly is all involved in that, but it's pretty important to make your own server. You can run a lot of your own services off of it, and you don't have to give your information up to Google, to Facebook, to Amazon, which a lot of people are increasingly concerned about is handing over their personal information to these services, but a lot of times it's actually the services like um, our Google Drive or, or stuff that's directly invited into our home that is really providing the most personalized data about, our, about ourselves. So you can host your own uh, stuff. Now I am using OpenHab. I'll actually turn the camera around so you guys can see it. I'm using OpenHab for a variety of reasons. Let's zoom in. OpenHab has some nice advantages for me because uh, Home Assistant, you have to run a server specifically running um, Home Assistant, whereas OpenHab allows me to just run OpenHab on my server. So I don't have to like run a separate server, which is kind of nice. And I'll just show you guys here. Basically, I don't have much set up on here. I'm just kind of like playing around with it more than anything. But if I like click the, the light switch that's in the kitchen, uh, it has a button here to turn it on or off. It also has an app available. Let me show you guys the light. Nice. So it does in fact work. It does what you need it to do. And, uh, oops, let me zoom back out. It does what you need it to do and you can add tons more stuff to it. I also have, I didn't show you guys there, but I also have a thermometer slash hygrometer on there and I have it in the tiny house right now to chart the temperatures and, um, and humidity inside the, inside the tiny house. And let me just check the app here. So the app is also like open source and available on a lot of stuff. Um, there is some more setup required if you want offline use, but, oh yeah, here we go. I'll show you guys here. So here I have the app, and if I turn the slider there, 
Oops. It'll turn on the light, turn it off, it'll turn it off. So it does work. Um, there's a little bit more setup needed if you want to use this like um, on the worldwide internet, like from you know the store if you want to turn on a light. But for just in your house use, this does work. You can use it on the worldwide internet, but you need a little bit more stuff because you'd have to secure your home network to be accessed from online, and I'm not an expert in that. But there's one other thing that I want to mention. So the story of how I got into this is that Carrie at her job, she wanted to have a, uh, like when she's sitting down at her desk, she wanted to have the ability to dim her lights from you know where she's sitting. So I ended up buying this TP-Link uh, Wi-Fi switch. And that sounded like a great idea to me because Wi-Fi is like a pretty open standard and there's a lot of stuff available for Wi-Fi. Uh, but one, there's two issues that I ran into and they're kind of related. One is that I have, we live in a house that's old enough that we don't have a neutral wire inside the box for the light switch. So most, wi most Wi-Fi switches, in fact nearly all of them, especially below a certain price, need a neutral wire. And the core reason why that is, is that you think about a light switch, power only runs through it when the switch is on. When it's off, there's no power running through it at all. Meaning that there's no power to power the, the, like, the wireless card inside of there. And so Wi-Fi uses a decent amount of electricity, so it's kind of impractical to put a battery large enough to run that card for an extended period of time. So you can get ones that, are, that don't need a neutral wire, but basically they have a big battery in them, and so they might not fit in all boxes and stuff. Either way, the much easier thing to do is to look for one that doesn't require a neutral wire. And the ones that don't require neutral wires use this thing called Zigbee. Now, when I was looking around, I actually found this stuff out on the OpenHab forums because I was searching, like, how am I going to do this? And I, I didn't know a lot about this, so I was just doing some research. That's why it's nice for me to uh, communicate to you guys the stuff that I learned because it'll put you streets ahead if you want to make your own uh, Libre home automation setup. But the brand, or sorry, the, the, the type of, uh, of network that they recommended for this sort of thing was using a Zigbee network. I had no idea what that was, but Zigbee is actually about as old as Wi-Fi. It is similarly an IEEE networking standard, but its focus is different, whereas Wi-Fi is designed for like moving files and stuff, like large, large files uh, and quickly. Zigbee is for communicating like really small amounts of information, but using extremely low levels of power. So it's used in like healthcare or, or home automation is a great example as well. So a Zigbee network, uh, the switch is actually really, really small. This is what goes inside of the, let me see if I get this to focus. This is what goes inside of the light switch. It actually only has four pins at the bottom. So two of those connect to the switch itself and two of those are the black and white wires going into and out of the box. And that's all you need. Uh, so with this, you can actually still just use the toggle switch on, side, on the wall. And it is once again hooked into this and telling it turn on or off. And then you can obviously pair it to open hub or home assistant or whatever and turn it on or off that way. So um, if you're in Canada, this Sonoff brand seems to have a lot of stuff. Let me show you again. That's the name there, Sonoff. This Sonoff brand seems to have a lot of stuff and it's you know free shipping and stuff because it's Amazon, so it's very convenient. Um, and they have like switches. They, I, that's where I bought the thermometer, hygrometer from. They have some other stuff. So you can get like a pretty decent setup. They're not too expensive at all. And like I say, that's, it's a big advantage that, um, that you can use this in an older house because not everyone has like a brand new house. If you have a brand new house, I guess you could use Wi-Fi, but still, I think that Zigbee is a better way to go because that way you're not using up all of the space on your Wi-Fi network for a bunch of switches, like dozens of switches. And uh, furthermore, furthermore, there's sometimes security issues with adding IoT devices to your Wi-Fi network because sometimes they're not as secure as they should be. Now, to make the Zigbee network, you do need sort of sort of like a Wi-Fi router, but for Zigbee. Uh, so this is the one that I bought. I bought a previous one before, and because of some firmware issue that I don't understand, it doesn't work with with OpenHab very easily. So if you're going to use OpenHab, I don't think it matters for Home Assistant. If you're gonna use OpenHab, look specifically for the ZB or ZB as the Americans might say, dongle dash E as in echo. It's up there, sweetie. So the ZB dongle dash E is the one that you want. There's a dash P, that one does not work. And actually I'll go show it to you guys here in the networking cabinet up here. Let's go walk on over there. 
So I mounted it, you can mount it straight to your server, to your laptop, but I mounted it a little bit higher up on a USB extension. There it is right there. So it actually has a line of sight with the tiny house so I can uh, theoretically put some of these devices in the tiny house. Uh, and I do, well I do have the thermometer and hygrometer in there so it's communicating well with that. So that's how you can do it. So I haven't really begun to scratch, I haven't really began to scratch the surface of what you can do with OpenHab, but it does really seem like you can do a lot. Uh, Sonoff also sells door sensors, so you can actually create a security system out of this. The way that OpenHab really works is pretty interesting. You create like, it's very programming-y. You create like um, different objects inside, this, inside the program, like you have indoor, outdoor, and then you might have like your different rooms, like kitchen inside of indoor. And then inside that you might have like uh, lights or other things. And so it, it allows you to create sort of like scripts where you can um, have these different groupings of things do various things at different times. So it's pretty powerful and pretty extensible. And more importantly, you don't have people spying on your what you're doing inside of your house and all that stuff. So it's, pretty, it's a pretty good way to do it. Uh, I would recommend playing around with it. It's a, it's a good way to do it. And depending on your needs, uh, it could be something that really fits well with your with your lifestyle. Like I say, I don't know I don't know everything about this, but I think that more importantly, a lot of people just aren't aware that there are uh, like freedom respecting options for this sort of thing. And you just see all of these brands uh, shown in your face at the store and you think that that's all there is, but there are other options and so I wanna throw those out there. And it's not just Open Hab, it's Home Assistant. There's more brands than just Sonoff. There's other Zigbee brands. But uh, anyway, thanks so much for watching guys. The first video of the new year. And we look forward to bringing you guys more stuff here in 2024. All right, bye for now. Thanks, guys.